This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Anna Gloin talks about her research on the genetics of diabetes. Hello Anna. Hi. Do genes have a role to play in the risk of getting diabetes? Yes, they do, but there are many different types of diabetes and the amount that your genes contribute actually depends on the particular type of diabetes we're talking about. Now, there are some very rare forms of diabetes and for these, the genes have a major impact. And then there are some common forms of diabetes, such as type 2, and for these, it's a combination of your genes and the environment. So if we took type 2 diabetes, for instance, if you have a brother or a sister with type 2 diabetes, then you're three times more likely to get diabetes than somebody in the general population. But the good news is it's not all about your genes and that we know you can uh, reduce your uh, chances of getting diabetes or delay its onset by exercising more and eating less. How much do we know about the genetics of diabetes? We know quite a lot now actually. We've, been, um, we've made sub- uh, substantial progress over the last few years with some rare monogenic forms of diabetes which are due to a defect in just one gene. And more recently, we've made significant headway with the more complicated type 2 diabetes where genes and environment play a role. And we now know that there are over 50 different genes that play a role. But this is just the tip of the iceberg because they only account for a very small proportion, about 10% of that genetic risk I was mentioning. And how can this help us diagnose or treat patients? Well, for these rare forms of diabetes, we're now able to offer genetic testing that gives a definitive diagnosis to patients. And this is really important because it can help the doctor decide how best to treat and manage that person's diabetes. There are also important implications for family members because with these rare forms of diabetes, there's a 50% chance of passing the diabetes on to your child. So, of course, here we can do genetic counselling and we can monitor that person's risk. For the more common forms of diabetes, we're only just starting to think about how we might be able to use this genetic information to tailor treatments and to think about uh, predicting uh, whether or not a person is more or less likely to get diabetes. So this is very much an active area of research. And what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? I think one of the biggest breakthroughs has really come from work that Oxford itself contributed to, which were large-scale genetic association studies. And these have identified these 50 or so genes that are implicated in diabetes risk. And what they've told us is that it's the insulin secreting cells that are most important, and that defects in the insulin secreting machinery are what leads to diabetes. And we also know that the number of these cells makes a significant impact on your risk for developing the disease. And why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, diabetes isn't a very nice condition to have. It increases your risk of having a heart attack, it leads to blindness, and it also leads to kidney damage. And we also know that it takes over more than 10% of the NHS budget. So it has significant uh, implications for, uh, for cost. And we also know as we move forward that this is going to increase because it's predicted by 2030 that a staggering 366 million people worldwide will have diabetes. And of this, over 95% will be type 2. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? fits in very nicely actually because the ultimate goal of my work is to try and translate this genetic information into biological insights into how that insulin secretion uh, machinery works and the hope is that if we uncover novel biological pathways we might be able to exploit these for developing new therapeutic interventions but this isn't a simple process and it's going to require lots of different steps along the way. So I'm working very closely with colleagues here in Oxford, firstly to try and work out what's happening at the level of this insulin secreting cell, and secondly to study these genetic variants in the whole uh, human being to see what the effects are on physiology. Thank you, Anna.